Okay, so the idea is, is that accommodations that we make physically on campus um, don't only help people with disabilities, but they help other people as well. Someone pulling a cart will take advantage of a ramp. Someone who gets short of breath going up the steps can take the elevator, and so on. All right. So you can say those things are put in place for people with disabilities, and it's true because it does help them, but it also helps people with milder forms of the disability or um, that may have some temporary condition that causes some problem. Can anything else, anyone else see things that, that are used on campus to help people uh, with disabilities? Besides the things that were mentioned. Front of the, uh, what about the front of the drinking fountain? It has a tab, so you push it. Yeah. The okay. Uh, it, it's, it's designed in a way to make it easier to push. The muscle sticks out, so your wheelchair, a person in a wheelchair underneath it. Okay. It also is yeah. is 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 uh, oriented in such a way that uh, someone in a wheelchair can use it. Um, that is an example of, a wheelchair would be an example of assisted technology, all right? Um, generally speaking, and when we talk, it, it, uh, same thing applies when we talk about, when we're, when we're talking about building uh, accommodations on the web. Generally speaking, people use a combination of two things to help um, make a website accessible to people with disabilities. First of all, there is assistive technology. In the real world, this would be something like a wheelchair. In other words, it's something that the person with the disability uses that helps them navigate through the day. There's also what are called reasonable accommodations. And that would be something like a ramp or an elevator. A person could have a wheelchair. If there weren't ramps and elevators on campus, it would still be very difficult for them to move around, even with the assistive technology. And that's important for us to keep in mind as we start talking about developing websites. We'll be talking about some assistive technology that people use with websites. Uh, but we'll also be talking about what reasonable accommodations you need to make in order to make those work, in order to make those work as, as well as possible. So it takes two things. There's some great assistive technology that are out there for a variety of disabilities, but the person developing the web design ha uh, has to develop with those assistive technologies in mind. Is anyone aware of a, a piece of assistive technology that would help someone uh, navigate the web? Yes. Uh, an actual reader? Yeah, a reader, a screen reader. That's what I yeah. And what that does is that actually uh, narrates the screen to them. So let's bring this up. This is going to sound really awkward, all right? It's not going to be straightforward. It's not like real easy because we're not used to using it this way. And you might look and say, how could someone possibly use this to navigate the web? If it was your only choice, you'd figure out a way to make it work, all right? So uh, as, as difficult or as, as awkward as this may seem, this allows people with disabilities to navigate the web. So let's bring it up in Windows. Windows sort of has a bare bones basic narrator, and there are also other narrators that are better that you can purchase if you happen to have that disability. Uh, let me attempt to find it. Ease of Access Center. All right, here are some assistive technologies that you can have. There's a screen magnifier. Um, we 
we can't see the screen at all. So we're definitely at a disadvantage. take a brief tour of some of these. Screen magnifier allows us to magnify the screen. And we can move it around to see the screen if we have uh, a hard time with vision. Um, I, I worked, uh, I had a radio show on WOBC, and one of the, um, one of the uh, other DJs um, had really poor vision, um, and they used a screen magnifier. They just went in and just expanded, and that way they could use the screen um, without a problem. There's an on-screen keyboard that you can use. I had a student that really had a lot of uh, problems. They weren't paralyzed, but they had a lot of difficulty like moving their hands, moving their arms and, ham and hands. So, but they could navigate a mouse to go and navigate. Um, so instead of using a regular keyboard, they could type in using the screen keyboard. That was easier for them to do than to use their fingers to, to type on there. So it's another example of assistive technology. Here is a uh, high contrast. Um, I don't think I set that up right. When all left sh shift print. For certain visual problems, that would that would help to have it um, like that. That turns it back. And then finally, the narrator. I hope we can hear this. Pardon me? ADA. There we go. So I'm going to open up Google Chrome. Internet important security improvements and new features are available in the latest version. So it's reading that to us. We could update it or tab. Tab. Apps.lorencc.edu says OK button. Enter. Lorraine County Community College. Real education. Real jobs. A real future. Lorraine County Community College, real education, real jobs, a real future. It's reading stuff that's not necessarily physically appearing on the screen, but is appearing in the code. Desktop 1, skip to content, link, value http colon slash slash www.lorrainecc.edu slash number sign con space. <laughs> Lorraine County Community College logo. Link, value HTT, AZ index, link, faculty slash staff, link, canvas, link. I'm using a tab key to navigate. Value HTTPS colon slash slash canvas dot Lorraine CCC dot edu, editable tooltip. I'm using a tab key to navigate because guess what? People that can't see can't use a mouse, right? Because you need to you need to point the mouse at something. Whereas someone that can't see can learn to touch type. 
because you're not supposed to look at the keyboard when you type anyhow, right? I always do, but you can learn. That's why the keyboard has a little, um, couple keys have the little uh, bump in them, so you can just by feel understand where you're at. So a person that can't see will be using um, the tab key to navigate around. And if you notice, as we were pressing the tab key, the link would be highlighted, and it would read the next link. So, if I hit the tab, it's going to go over to the My Campus link. My Campus link. And to access that, I'd hit the space. I lied. Up arrow. Up arrow. You would hit the enter to go to the My Campus page. Lorraine County Community College. My Campus, Lorraine County Community College. www.lorrainecc.edu slash register. Let www.lorrainecc.edu slash schedule planner. www.lorrainecc.edu slash office 365 students. Link value http colon slash slash www.lorrainecc.edu slash office 365 students. Editable. It, if you notice, it said the word editable. That's telling us that we are in a text box where we can type in our username. M-C-E-L-L-R-S. All right, so we can type it in. Now, I'm going to go turn this off because I think we have... Ease of access center. Start narrator but narrator settings. Press any exiting narrator. Because I think we have a feel for how it works. Again, obviously not an ideal situation. But, if that's the only way you could access the web, you'd use it, right? You'd have to. You wouldn't have any choice. I uh, did a, a summer fellowship at NASA, and I had a high school student that was blind that shared the office with me. And she would navigate and do everything that you would expect a high school student to do using the screen narrator. In fact, she wouldn't even have her screen on, which was weird. Like, coming in in the morning... She would be sitting there with the screen off, typing on the computer, you know, which just looks looks odd, right? Until you realize, well, she can't see the screen. What's the point of having the monitor on? Uh, so, like, every once in a while, she'd get confused about something where she was on the screen. So she'd call me over, and I'd have to turn the monitor in and explain to her what was going on on the screen uh, and, and take care of it. All right. This is an example of an assistive technology. Now. A few things that you may have noticed, for example, on forms, when we went into the box for user ID, all it said was editable field, all right? That's not very useful, because editable field for what? Is it expecting us to put our name in, our email address, our user ID, our password? So the form wasn't really designed with accessibility in mind, because even though we had the, uh, the, the uh, assistive technology, we really weren't able to figure out what to do there. All right? Now, it's possible someone that understands a screen reader better than me would be able to figure it out. Or if you had a better screen reader, you might be able to figure it out. But that's what I mean about how the design of the page and what you do on the design of the page can sort of ruin any assistive technology that uh, a user might have. So, we have assistive technology, and we make reasonable accommodations on our web pages. Assistive technology would include a screen reader, all right? Um, reasonable accommodations would include using all attributes on images, Remember we talked about that? If you have an image. And if you notice, if you remember back to that, when we reviewed Elsie's web page, the screen reader read that the one image that it was there was the logo of LCCC. So it was telling us what the image was 
It's not like we're able to see it, but there's nothing you can do to do that. At least you can explain to the user what that image represents. All attributes. When we talk about forms next week, we can put labels on forms. That's another thing that we can do to reasonable accommodations to make the assistive technology work better. Okay? We're going to look at a number of, 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 of uh, different uh, disabilities that a person might experience. And we're going to consider them from the perspective of, is there any sort of dis, uh, assistive technology for it? And then what reasonable accommodations can we make? Usually reasonable accommodations uh, fall under two qualities. Uh, have, have sort of two qualities about them. Number one is we're going to keep things simple. Remember some of the web pages that we looked at when we talked about bad web pages? How much stuff was going on on those web pages? How complicated it was to figure out what was going on? Can you imagine trying to access those pages if a screen reader is trying to narrate it to you? It would really, really, really be difficult. So, if you keep your web pages simple, that's one thing that you can do to help people with disabilities. Second thing that you can do is you can use what's called multiple presentations. of content. An example of that is you could have a picture with a caption. The picture shows you what's going on. The caption describes it in words. So we're taking the same content and we're presenting it two different ways. If we do these things, then we can make for accommodations and people with assistive technology can access our pages and, and uh, get as much out of them as they possibly can. Unfortunately, there's nothing that we can do that will make someone that can't see, see a picture that's on our page. We can describe it, but that's the best we can do. Yes? Uh, that's a good question. You could do something with multiple CSS files to make it easier, easier to be read, I would think. So yeah, you probably could do something along those lines. Um, uh, allowing a page to be customizable would be, would be that. Um, that would, would uh, have the potential to do that. All right, so we're going to cover a number of disabilities. And I'm looking for the eraser right at this moment. Because I was back here yesterday. Oh, it was behind me. No wonder I didn't see it. Thank you. Let's list some disabilities. And I'll get it started. First disability we're going to con concern ourselves with is vision. That's probably the most obvious one, but it's not the only one. That's one thing I aim to, uh, that's one of my objectives of this section, is to talk about all the disabilities that are relevant as far as accessing the web. A lot of people, even web professionals, even people that should know better, tend to think that, well, to make your website accessible, put on all attributes and you'll be okay. Whereas web accessibility goes far beyond that because there's more issues than vision but vision is certainly probably the most obvious issue all right so a um, few things to keep in mind about vision there's the extreme disability related to vision which would be blindness that is someone would be completely blind they can't see anything are there other vision-related issues that would uh, affect the, the ability of someone to access a website? There is a, 
nearsightedness and farsightedness. Yeah, it, just poor vision, whether it be nearsightedness or farsightedness. I know I have a hard time reading the screen. I have bifocals that sort of help me some of the time a little bit, all right? But I still have trouble reading the screen because of my poor eyesight. Will be another example of a vision problem that might make it difficult to navigate a website. Exactly, color blindness. So, under vision, we have the most extreme form of the disability, which is blindness, as no vision at all. We also have less extreme, <coughs> but not necessarily that much less problematic. People that are color blind, <coughs> people that have poor vision. And here's the sad truth that I can vouch for, all right? Almost all of the disabilities that we're going to mention, as you get older, you tend to have mild forms of them, all right? So <laughs> you don't go blind necessarily, but your vision gets bad. You don't go deaf necessarily, but your hearing goes bad. You still can move your arms and hands, but you may experience pain or your... Um, flexibility might be limited, or your ability to point to a very small area of the screen might be limited, and so on. So we'll put underneath like just about every disability that we say, age-related conditions. Let's talk about colorblind for a second. What does it mean when someone's colorblind? Do they see the world in black and white? They could be blind to one or two different colors. Right. Color blindness doesn't necessarily mean that you see the world in black and white. Color blindness, um, there's different sorts of color blindness uh, that may involve uh, the, 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 the <coughs> lack of the ability to distinguish between two different colors. Um, I'm going to bring up actually a resource, a color blind filter, where we can look at web pages and pretend like we're colorblind. Okay, here is an image of certain, well, what are those, crayons, I guess. And I guess we can, we can even put our own image in there. This is what a normal person with normal color vision would see. Here's a list of, <coughs> looks like eight different kinds of color blindness. And we'll see. Let's say you're, you have this red, weak Protonomaly, that's what that would look like. Notice that the reds are weak, just as it would imply, right? So something like this is kind of a reddish purple is going to look more bluish. This one, which was sort of a very bright red, is going to look sort of a dullish, um, almost brownish color. This is what it would look like if you have this kind of color blindness. And finally, this is what it's going to look if you have this color blindness. Here's the second set of forms of color blindness. Compare that to this. Compare that to this. Compare that to this. And then finally, there's a third form, which are cut off. We can't read the whole thing, but that is, the first one is more or less black. seeing the world monochromatically, black and white. And this one is very um, less obvious colors. All right. 
So what can we do to accommodate people that are colorblind on our website? You could use it. complex images like this. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, on the images, uh, we could we could do that. What about like on the text? You gonna say something? I didn't say you could like with text. I guess I was gonna say something about different CSS files, but you could uh, that they could select from. But you could do like just regular black and white, right? Okay. And make it. There, there, there's a couple good thoughts there. Let, let's explore both of them. Number one, you could allow people to use different CSS files, right? That would help them, and they could pick the one that helps them see the best. This website used to do that. I'm not sure if it does anymore. The Perkins School of the Blind. Yeah, they, I thought so. They revised this site. They revised this site to, uh, and, and so it's different now. But yeah, one thing you could do is you could give people the choice of saying, what CSS do you want? All right? And they could, you could pick the CSS that allowed you to see the page better. All right? Um, Second thing you could do is black and white are always good color schemes for text and background. All right, it doesn't matter what your site is, black and white will 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 generally work well. All right. Um, if you don't want to use black and white, you can pick something that's going to be obvious. For example, white text on a blue background. Even if you couldn't distinguish the blue correctly, you could still see the white text on it. So you'd pick color con uh, combinations that have a good contrast. And if you didn't know yourself, you could actually uh, uh, test it through something like the colorblind tester. So um, let me find a different colorblind filter. We can put in a web page, and we can filter it for a certain kind of color blindness. <coughs> this sometimes takes a while. All right. Notice that if you have this kind of color blindness, notice that image looks a little off, but everything else is readable. Well, that one, the image doesn't look bad at all. That one, the image looks off, but it still generally looks readable. So again, there's nothing you can do to make it look out of the same for people that are color blindness, but you can at least... Uh, get it to work under different things. Here's what I'd like you to do, and you can work individually or you can collaborate. For the next 10 minutes or so, think of a list of other disabilities besides vision that could affect someone's ability to access a web page. All right? And when we come back, we'll talk about them, and after you've identified those, think of what you could do. All right, a couple things I forgot to mention about vision, by the way, just to wrap out those up. What we talked about for color blindness, having adequate contrast between the background and the, and the, and the words, is that going to help other people as well? Of course it will. Uh, no one could read an orange text on a yellow background, right? Or it's going to be very difficult for people to read that. So even if someone with no vision related issues, but definitely someone that has maybe poor vision or whatever could benefit. Or could benefit by the ability to customize it. Or could benefit from the ability to have 
certain size font or to be able to resize the font and all that. So that's a characteristic of accessibility issues as well, is they can help people that don't have the disability, um, or at the very least, it doesn't make any difference to them. For example, there's Braille outside uh, our door that says the room number. Doesn't probably help anyone that can see, but it's not like it gets in your way. It's not like you can't find this room because the Braille gets in the way. So a lot of times our accommodations help people that don't have the disabilities, or at the very least, they don't get in the way. So what were some of the disabilities that you came up with besides vision? Yes. Like attention deficit disorders. Okay. I was going to say apprehension. ADHD, cognitive <laughs> issues. Uh, uh, saw another hand up. Oh, uh, fingers and toes. Okay. Pain or, or parts of arm uh, Mobility issues. Either, again, running the range from people that have amputations or paralysis to people that have things like arthritis or carpal tunnel or so on. Um, yes? I don't know if you would count like tremors under that because like that would be harder to hit like smaller buttons. Yeah. Um, we'll call those neurological issues. that cause tremors. I guess that in a way could be counted there or could be its own category, yes? Uh, like another one for the neurological issues would be like <coughs> epileptic. Okay. Epilepsy. Especially if they have ADHD. 
If you really absolutely have to have an animation on your page, like you were, you weren't just putting an animation just to make your page look exciting or interesting. But if you really had to have an animation on your page that maybe showed the process of how something is manufactured, how they make computer chips, so you have a little animation. Well, you can make sure the animation doesn't have the flashing that triggers epilepsy, or at the very least, you can put a warning that says, click here to see the animation. And that way, someone with epilepsy would know, well, maybe that's going to cause me problems. I won't click on it. All right? And what you might have instead then, instead of an animation, you might have a series of photographs that say, here's the first step, here's the second step, here's the third step. Again, what are we getting down to? We're getting down to simplicity. If the animation isn't required, then don't put it on your page because it's just a distraction for everyone. If the animation is necessary, then you keep it simple and make it so that it doesn't trigger seizures. Or you provide an alternative. Instead of having an animation, only an animation, you have an animation and a series of photographs. All right? And in that way, again, you're benefiting people that don't have epilepsy, and you're also accommodating people that do have epilepsy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a picture of this, post it to Canvas, and we'll pick up next time analyzing how people that have these disabilities are affected, are there minor versions of these disabilities, and uh, what we can do to, to accommodate that, uh, keeping in the principle of keeping it simple, and multiple presentations. Okay, I'm going to go grab, I'm going to go unlock the lab, then I'll be back to get, take the picture and um, get the files for the video, and then I'll be back over in lab.